Today we're going to see how the new M3 Max chip performs in Blender 4. Specifically, we'll check out cycles rendering, fluid simulations, and overall viewport responsiveness. So if you're in the market for an M3 and love yourself some Blender, my hope is at the end of this, you can make an informed decision if one of these machines is right for you. Now, in addition to CPU improvements, which should help with overall responsiveness and simulation, 4.0's big new feature is hardware ray tracing support for the M3 chip. So let's start with that. All right, so let's get into it. I'm not gonna go too heavy on cycles, but I do think this is where the most improvement was made. And so I do wanna give just a couple examples so we can see what it's like. Though I will start off with general viewport performance. So I've loaded up the Blender 3.5 splash screen. And as you can see here, uh, it's really, really smooth punching in. Not like we'd expect this to be chunky, but uh, it's nice to see that on these machines, uh, we're, we're getting really great viewport performance here from the shaded view. If we go to textured, it looks like we'll lose just a hint of performance, but it's still very smooth and uh, easy to work with. And then the nicest surprise of all is when we go into the cycles mode here, it is now fast enough with the hardware to actually render the scene out and allow us to mostly move around the scene check out what our cycles materials and lighting pipeline looks like without having to wait too long for it to redraw. So overall, super impressed with this result. Now I will say that as I'm going through these different jobs, I will be fully quitting and restarting Blender. The reason why I'm doing that is just to show off the snappiness of these M3s. It's not like Blender really takes that long to load, but the combination of how fast it loads and then how fast it loads the job data is a testament to how good some of the single core performance on these machines have gotten. So very, very snappy, and you'll be seeing that throughout the video. At any rate, just to render this out though, I believe this is gonna come in at around eight seconds, give or take a little bit here. So great result, 7.85 seconds to render that out. So moving on to the 3.3 splash screen, I chose this one because it's actually quite a bit heavier from a polygon count. So this one is 5.3 million triangles, about 2 million, 2 million more than the previous job. And as you can see here, viewport performance is quite a bit slower than we had before. Um, it's almost to the point where it would start to be hard to work like this. Of course, this job does break out elements by their type, so you can obviously remove some to claw back some of that performance. Uh, once again, though, as a nice pleasant surprise, Cycles is now fast enough such that we can sort of move around the scene and it doesn't turn into complete mush as we're trying to pan around and it makes it much easier just to punch in, see a particular part of the scene, make sure your lighting looks good and uh, uh, get a nice preview. So really happy with that. And as far as the raw render goes, as mentioned previously, going to take advantage of the optical denoiser by just turning down our samples and enabling the denoiser. And I believe this scene is gonna come in at around, I think it's between 20 and 30 seconds, maybe 30. For reference, the top of the line max chip that I had would do this one about 15% faster. So a, an appreciable bump, but if you're waffling between the sort of introduction max and the top line max, I am plenty happy with the performance that this guy gives me right here. Uh, so yeah, so 30 seconds on this one right here. Moving on to the classic BMW, not a whole lot to say here. Uh, but hardware ray tracing absolutely makes a difference. You can see here from start to finish, we're gonna come in at a, around, I think, 11 seconds. And the max that I had uh, for testing would render this out about eight and a half seconds for reference. But once again, the sample count here at 1225 is really, really high. With denoisers, we don't need to go nearly that extreme. Instead, we can pump it down and now you'll notice that we have 1.8 seconds for a render here. And in fact, the quality here is, is actually better. The headlamps here with their translucency uh, usually uh, cause the uh, full uh, sample version without denoising to get pretty grainy in this area. You'll notice it's it looks really great here. So again, great result. Of course, we have Classroom, the old standby. We'll look at both the render here and uh, viewport performance. 
once again, we'll turn down our samples, enable denoise, render. I believe we're going to come in in around nine seconds total, 10 and a half. So great result. And again, the viewport, um, two, 290,000 triangles here, much easier scene to render out. And so our performance here is, is very good. No issues whatsoever with uh, manipulating this environment. And then finally, we have Gooseberry. I chose this one because this has um, some particles. So it's got uh, hair and it has grass. And again, it's a good demonstration of lowering samples, turning on denoise, getting a really high quality result in pretty short order of time. I believe this one will come in at about 20 seconds. Um, unmodified using the full sample count, I believe this would come in at around a minute 40 and the max was a minute and a half, uh, though I may be getting those numbers slightly wrong. But as you can see here, 20 seconds, 21 seconds, beautiful result. Kept all of our detail in the hair, in the grass, and even though YouTube's gonna be adding some banding here on my screen, this is really smooth. Uh, great result here once again. So that's Cycles. Really happy with the hardware ray tracing. Uh, this scene here, the cloth internal pressure, this is not a difficult scene to run, but just as an example of running a sort of physics simulation, you can see our scene frame rate at 25 is being respected in both the uh, drawn preview and the uh, shaded preview right here. So nothing too surprising, but this is what it looks like. We can pan around here, no problem, or rotate, zoom in, and our playback remains rock solid. Of course, there are more complex simulations that we can run. So this is a fluid simulation. If you've never run these before, you go into the uh, physics tab here and you will do what's called bake the simulation. So uh, we'll kick that off right now. A couple quick notes about this just for comparison's sake. When I ran this on my PC that has an Intel i7-10700, it's a couple year old uh, CPU now, but it's still, you know, out there. Uh, this machine is about twice as fast at running the simulation, and it was about twice as fast of the playback of the simulation as well. Um, and of course, we'll see that when this is done. Uh, and then lastly, quick note about noise. So this doesn't always happen, but as we're now really sort of hammering that CPU, I have seen the fans spin up at around 150 frames. Don't know if that'll happen this time, uh, but for the most part, everything that we've done so far, the the, uh, the machine has been completely silent. So there haven't been any cuts here. This has just been one of these renders and simulations after another. So far, the machine is perfectly silent, um, but we will possibly hear a bit of a, a whisper on this simulation. And in the next simulation that we run, we will definitely hear the fans. We'll call that out when we get to it. But uh, so far, totally silent and great performance as well. So it's gonna take about a minute or two more, so I'll go ahead and let this finish up and we'll check back in when it's done. All right, so as we're finishing up here now, just quickly noting the fans did start just a few moments ago, though they're not loud, they're sort of that whisper that you hear in the background, uh, but uh, they did kick in. And just to demonstrate playback performance then, so we have the shaded and we'll turn on EV here. And you'll notice that we're running between 16 and 20 frames per second. Again, the PC that I had with a 10700 and a 3080 uh, was running this at around nine to 10 frames per second. So again, a great, great result here for a laptop form factor. Real quickly, just to look at hair rendering, what that might look like. So here in the viewport doing the uh, shaded, very fast response. If we turn on, in this case, Eevee, we get a little bit of a slowdown here, though still, I would say, acceptable. And we can switch this over to Cycles. And even using the GPU here, this does get a little bit more difficult to run. I can certainly use this, but if you had a large scene with lots of hair, this would certainly slow down um, uh, compared to what uh, the other shaded methods would. But still a decent result here. That's what it looks like. And then the last job that we have is a much more intensive simulation. 
So we'll go ahead and expand these windows out so you can see this a little bit easier. So this particular simulation actually has two uh, baking steps to it. So we're gonna bake the simulation, then we'll bake the mesh next. So we'll kick off the simulation right now with the baking data. And we'll once again, let that fast forward and we'll check back in when it's time to bake the mesh. I'm gonna break in here now. It's been about a minute or so of running the simulation. The fans have ramped back up to what they were with the last simulation. But particularly with this one, because I've done it before, they're gonna keep ramping up and up and up. And this machine does get pretty loud, but uh, the difference here is this simulation is definitely taxing the CPU more than what the first one did. So you probably won't be able to hear it on the mics, but this is quite a bit louder than we had before. So again, I'll pause here and let it uh, continue on. All right, so as this finishes up again, the fans are really cranked up here. Unfortunately, I don't have one of the RPM counters, but this is not the loudest this machine goes, but it's getting there. But now that we've baked the simulation, we can bake the mesh data. This goes quite a bit faster. So the simulation, it looks like it was about two frames per second, give or take. This one quite a bit faster, around 10, 15, maybe 20 frames per second. And with that done, we should now be able to run our simulation. So I'll start with the basic shaded here. And just in real time, then we'll toggle over to the textured. You can see here the simulation isn't quite populating in. Fans, by the way, are now starting to kick down a little bit. And finally, we'll go to cycles here. And you can see that our simulation is running mostly at full frame here. And yeah, so there you have it. The sort of start to finish uh, task here took about, I would say maybe two minutes, two and a half, three minutes. And overall then, hopefully in this video, as I said in the beginning, you've gotten a good sort of representation of what the um, performance characteristics of this base level M3 are. Again, I'm very happy with it. Uh, cycles in hardware rendering to me is an easy win. And then the CPU on this thing uh, is, quite capable. The only downside is it will spin up those fans. And depending on the power mode that you're running on, in this case, I'm running it on the high performance mode. So it really lets the fans ramp up. It could get uh, perhaps a little bit loud if you really like uh, silent operation. But of course, Apple makes computers for you if you want total silence. But uh, for the most part, yeah, I'm very happy with the performance of this machine. And hopefully this has given you somewhat of a view of what it's like to work on this thing with the most recent Blender.